So welcome to this week's video. You join me here at Upmore, um, RSPB Upmore, fabulous place. Uh, the main reason why I've come here this morning is so I can sort of be efficient in uh, the use of Denise's car um, and then move back towards uh, the farm where I'm currently got the trail cams. So when I got here, first thing just after dawn, Denise fortunately got a lift into work, which meant I could have the car for dawn. Uh, the ibis i was lucky enough to just see the ibis for uh, 15 20 minutes before it took off which was really really lovely managed to film these lovely birds uh, before or just north of uh, Titchfield Haven and I'll leave a little uh, link to that video here. There were four birds uh, at that venue and the light was such that really did show off their sort of iridescent plumage uh, much better than, than this morning. It appeared as if it was uh, roosting uh, in the tree to the right and speaking to the a couple of the locals they were saying that it sort of tends to leave uh, around about 6.30. So I was there waiting patiently, anticipating, looking for indications that it was going to take flight. So my intention was to get move from screen one up to screen two, which I did. Um, so I've been up there, caught a little bit of footage, which is really nice. From the second screen, it sort of faces into the sun, which is a little bit more of a challenge. But it was lovely to see this great white egret. And only until recently have these birds become much more common, expanding their breeding ranges northwards uh, towards Britain and Ireland. It was great to see how it dwarfed these snipe. And you can certainly admire the snipe's camouflage ability as this common sandpiper passes one just on the edge of the vegetation. Back down here with a view really, um, there's been some leucistic um, marsh harriers reported. So if you've watched this video, um, I watched a video of mine previously when I was here, I was filming the adults um, uh, back and forth to the nest and feeding the young. Well, they're now up and flying, and like I say, they're a pair of leucistic um, uh, birds. So fingers crossed, the idea is to hopefully uh, catch them. They'll probably stay here till about um, midday, uh, and then, like I say, move back to the farm and trip the cameras. So, yeah, let's see what comes. Initially I interviewed uh, a couple of the adults, but after an hour or so, on the right hand side of the screen, then we saw the, the cystic young. It appears as if one of the birds is showing quite a large amount of white feathers on the wings.
they seem to spend short spells of time in flight and then perching on these small bushes waiting uh, for their parents uh, to bring them food. And it seems as if there's a little bit of sibling rivalry as they had a little spat now and again. I have seen uh, the cystic deer before, a fallow deer, but this is the first time I've seen it in birds and it's caused by a sort of a genetic uh, mutation which inhibits the melanin uh, and other pigments uh, from being deposited in the feathers. This pigment that gives the sort of dark appearance uh, to the feathers. Uh, this condition is inherited, um, but on occasions can skip several generations which has probably occurred here. I suppose the knock-on effect uh, for these birds as become adults is they may not be recognised or accepted uh, by a potential mate. When they took flight, really concentrated because you knew one of the adults was about, and I was really hoping to try and catch a, a food pass. And although the footage is a little bit shaky, you can just about make out the parent dropping some food to the juvenile. So this common tern spent some time uh, hunting in, just in front of the screen. But it looked as if this egret uh, was a little bit annoyed with his presence and spent a few minutes uh, chasing it off before returning to its perch. Upon leaving the screen, I managed to see these lizards on these logs warming themselves up in the afternoon sunshine. Well, another fabulous day here at Otmore. I must admit, uh, I 
I do love coming to this place. It's definitely worth the investment and time and actually a little bit of a walk as well to get to the screens. But to see the glossy ibis first thing was just brilliant. Back now uh, home, drop into the uh, farm to have a look at the trail cams. Uh, hopefully a little bit of a success there, just subtly moved them the last time I was there. So yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a big thumbs up, like and subscribe. And as always, it's great for you to join me in a cup of coffee for the next one.